Hey guys, welcome back to How to Rip's Lesson of the Week. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss how you can build stronger legs for surfing. But to do that, we need to get to the gym. So, let's go. And guys, if you're new here, why don't you subscribe to the channel now where we upload two videos every week to help your surfing progress. But for now, let's get some stronger legs. Okay, so let's start with discussing why surfers need to have strong legs. Now, I would hope that this would be fairly obvious to everyone, but good surfing means that a surfer needs to go in and out of compression, and compression means getting low into a squat position. It also means that you need to have explosiveness when you perform moves like cutbacks, snaps, finners, airs, and anything like that, you need to have the ability to produce power, and that comes from your strong legs. When you surf a wave like Snapper, for example, a long wave where you could perform many turns, that is hard work. Your legs will be feeling the burn. So by having stronger legs, you're gonna be able to last longer and keep doing those aggressive maneuvers the whole way along a wave. So we're gonna start with the most basic exercises first. And you might find along the way that there are some limiting factors for you. And often these come back to flexibility and strength. So if you find these movements harder, go for the easier options. And then once you work on your flexibility and you get stronger over time, then you can try the advanced versions. Very important to be careful and always err on the side of caution with these things. And if in doubt, see your personal trainer and they can help you out. So the first movement we're gonna learn is the squat. Let's start with feet positioning first. You don't want to have your feet too close together. Likewise, not too far apart. So we're looking for feet to be about shoulder width apart, with your toes angled slightly out, not too far in or too far out, just a slight angle out. Of course, this will differ from person to person. To initiate a squat, you want to drive your hips back, keeping the weight in your heels, and then sitting down so that you go to just below 90 degrees at the angle of your knees and hips. One thing to be aware of when performing a squat is that you don't want your knee to go too far over your toe. This will result in loading up the quad too much. By focusing on initiating the squat by driving the hips back, you're going to engage the hamstring and the glute as well as the quad. Now this is what we're looking for. In addition to this, pay attention to where you're looking and what your upper body's doing. Squats like this are horrible and you're gonna get injured. What you want to do is be looking straight ahead with your chest up. By having your arms out in front like this will help you achieve that. So if you find that you're having issues actually setting up for a standard squat, there's one move that you can do to make things much easier and it will actually help you know the right mechanics to perform the move. This is called a wall squat. To perform this move, you need a wall. From there, you're going to position your feet so they're touching the wall. Hands on the wall, face the wall. All the same rules apply. Feet shoulder width apart, toes slightly angled out. We're gonna look straight ahead and squat down as far as we can. As you get better at that movement, you can make it more challenging by going lower, but also by bringing your feet in closer together. This is also a great way to warm up for the heavier squats that you're gonna work on later. One squat technique point, which is really important for safety and to perform them correctly, is what your knees are actually doing while you squat. Once you've set your feet up so that they're shoulder width apart, and your toes are slightly angled out, and you know that you need to drive the hips back, keep the weight in the heels, chest up, looking forward. The other thing you need to be conscious of is what the knees are doing. There's a temptation for the knees to bow in like this, especially when you start to add weight and it gets harder. So what you need to do is fight against that. To get used to that, think about driving the knees out. They should always be over the same angle as your feet. So another progression of the squat is called a goblet squat. 
To perform a goblet squat, you hold a dumbbell or a kettlebell and perform a squat like you usually would. Having that extra weight can help with balance and help with your technique. Simply grab the kettlebell or the dumbbell, keep it close to your chest and perform a squat. So once you've spent time building up your strength with a basic squat, you've then added weight with a goblet squat and you're looking for harder progressions. Now we can add weight with things like a back squat and a front squat. Now to do that you need a barbell and you'll also need a squat rack. But today I'm just going to demonstrate with a barbell how these movements are actually performed. Remember that technique is key and we're looking to focus on speed. Slow on the way down, focusing on your movement and fast on the way up. To perform a back squat correctly, you need to position the barbell on your back muscles. Now, by having your hands together, it will actually push your back muscles together and that will act like a shelf for the bar to sit on. From here, you perform a squat as per usual, but focusing on keeping that chest up. What you don't want to do is lean too far forward because that will put a lot of pressure on your lower back. Next, we look at the front squat. Positioning for this is equally as important. If it's too far back on your shoulders, it'll choke you, like you can see here. If it's too far forward, it'll make your elbows drop down, and especially when it gets heavier, this will make the bar fall off, but it will also put a lot of stress and load through your wrists. So it needs to be in the middle, resting on your shoulders. The next point to pay attention to is how you hold the bar. A full grip like this will put lots of stress on your wrist, especially if you don't have good mobility. So by holding it in your fingertips like this will give you more range to keep your elbows up. Now this is key for the front squat. Elbows up, chest up. So guys, remember that as you start to add weight to your back squat or your front squat, you must take small little progressions as you add that weight. It's better to be safer than sorry. So don't get your ego too much in front of your actual ability. Provided that you can actually perform the reps correctly and with good technique, then you can increase the weight. So squats are fantastic and we definitely recommend that you start with them when you're building up a foundation. And also continue on with them as you get stronger. They're fantastic for whole body strength and also helping you get stronger legs. But as surfers, we need to work on balance. So doing things like lunges and step ups are fantastic exercises to work on our individual leg strength and help work out if there's any deficiencies and then we can strengthen them appropriately. To perform a lunge, you simply step forward and then squat down. It's important to focus on the front leg. You wanna put most of your weight into the front leg and through that front heel. We wanna focus on a slow lower on the way down with an aggressive drive up and back to a feet together position. Once again, some things we wanna avoid is having that knee go too far over the toes. Once again, this loads up the quad and the knee joint a lot. We wanna try and avoid that. So by making sure that when you lunge, your knee doesn't go over your toe, you'll put more load and more engagement through the hamstring and the glute, as well as the quad. To make the lunge harder, you can add weight. Start with using dumbbells or kettlebells. A good variation of the lunge is to do a walking lunge like this. Another fantastic movement for single leg strength is the step up. Notice when I'm performing the step up, the box is high enough that that angle at my hip joint is 90 degrees. If it's much higher than this, it doesn't really work as well. But to start off with, you can actually go less than that. If you're new to this movement, it can be much easier if you don't have to push up as far. What we're looking to avoid is falling down like this. This doesn't result in any strength gain at all. So choose an appropriate box height. And to make this movement harder, you can once again add kettlebells or dumbbells. Most of the movements that we've looked at today focus on our quads and they also incorporate our glutes and our hamstrings. But there's one movement that we're about to cover called the deadlift. The deadlift works your posterior chain specifically. So that's your hamstrings, your glutes and your lower back. 
Now the deadlift sounds scary because it's got dead in it, but it's actually a fantastic movement and works really well for building up your strength and power of your whole body, not just your legs. And we definitely think you should incorporate this, but it's very important that you start with a light weight and then slowly progress heavier as you get more comfortable and you've spent more time doing this movement. To set up for the deadlift, your feet are gonna be in a hip width position compared to the squat, which is generally shoulder width. From here, your hands are just outside of your feet. It's important that your knees sit inside the elbow joint, as you can see here. This will ensure that your hamstrings, glutes, and lower back are engaged. If your knees come forward of your arms, it'll put a lot of load through the quad and it won't load the hamstrings and the glutes and the lower back properly, which then results in you loading up your lower back too much when you go to lift. When performing the deadlift, we focus on a fast controlled pull. It's important to look straight ahead and keep your chest up. So now you guys understand how to perform a deadlift. There's a few common mistakes that people could make that make the deadlift really dangerous. I'm gonna point them out to you now. So one of these mistakes is instead of having a nice straight back with a strong core engaged, they have a weak back and they're very hunched like this. They perform their movement hunched. If you do that, you put yourself at huge risk of getting a lower back injury. So make sure that you have a straight back the whole time. The other thing is the bar must be kept close to you at all times. Running up the shins, up the thighs, down the thighs, down the shins. If the weight goes away from your body, it makes it more dangerous because it puts more load on your lower back. So keep it close. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. I hope that now you understand what movements you can do to get stronger legs and you understand how to perform them and how to progress them. If you're unsure, hit the comment and I'll try and help you out. Guys, remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below to let us know what else you want to see. Guys, if you want to stay up to date with what boards we're riding and the gear that we're using, you can see all of that in the video description below. I'll catch you in the surf, guys. I'm out of here. Whoop! Something like this one. On the way, then looking.